Let's see where we are. What's up, Sean? Oh, it's going. It's going, my friend. It's going. Getting some getting some writing. A lot of writing in today. Setting up for MondoCon. Officially starting on Friday. What's going on with you today? Anything anything fun in the Canadian wilderness? Fight any dire wolves up there yet? No doubt was what I've been studying as a cougar or mountain lion. Cougar. Meow. Somebody's mom on the on the loose at the bars up there. Nothing wrong with a good cougar. We have I need to talk to you. Uh, we have a problem with the uh, the geese down here. I'm gonna need you to come and pick up all these damn geese. They're they belong to you. Not to not to me. They they don't uh, fly here for the winter. They stay all year round now. And then they have more and more babies. It's annoying. I said it couldn't be a cougar because there wasn't enough cleavage. <laughs> There's Tom Duffy. Tom Duffy in the house, literally in the house. <clears throat> Tom will be joining us shortly. He's got to finish a chapter first of our book. I picked up a new craft book by K.M. Whelan because I've been having some issues going from my loose outline to a scene list. Nice. What's the name of that uh, of that book? I might have it. You see behind me, this shelf, that shelf, and the shelf underneath are all writing reference books. I think I just ordered... Uh, Paul Tomlinson just came out with a new one. Writing cozy mysteries. Even though I don't write cozy mysteries, it's nice to have the book up there and get some ideas.
There's Mr. Frank. <clears throat> it's the second edition of Structuring Your Novel. Just came out this month. Oh, very cool. Very goth look today. Downtrodden Wednesday. I wasn't going to put the red hat on. But I figured, you know what? I'm wearing a black, uh, black shirt. I might as well go with the, with the black hat. Good guys wear black. As the uh, band Tough used to say back in the day. And Tom finally was able to resubscribe. 31 month streak. Bad guys wear black, Pantera says. You know what? Who would you rather uh, think is right, Pantera or the band Tough? Who can't even spell the word tough the proper way? <clears throat> Frank, you getting all excited to, to get down here tomorrow? Nope. All right. Whatever. <clears throat> no. I've done a lot of writing this morning. So it has a uh, 37% pack. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good packed... Uh, rate so far. Look at Sean trying to be cool. Hey Frank, sup? That's how the young kids say uh, hello. She's my laptop is sitting on top of my backpack. Do you really need anything else? My wife always gets mad whenever uh, she's like, all right, we got to pack for four days. I'm like, all right, I need like, I don't know, four pairs of socks and a pair of underwear. And I'll just wear the clothes I'm wearing and maybe like three shirts. She's like, no. I'm like, whatever. All right, I'll bring four pairs of underwear. I'll bring a pair of underwear for each day. I'm not changing my underwear every day. Lord, I'm not young. Closing in on 50. Well, I'm over 50, so you are young. <laughs> Ms. Ray's a sup G. Sup home. Sup slice. Holmes. I like how you just said sup home, though. Sup home. That sounded better. <clears throat> I probably won't be on for that long today. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I'm I'm tired. I got up very, very early this morning. I need a nap. B-Boys make some noise and just slam. Da-da-da, da-da-da. Exactly. Classic. What's, what's Chuck Buddha up to these days? You still chat with him. He's still writing. Kind of lost touch after your podcast ended. Yeah, I also lost touch with Chuck after my podcast ended. He's not dead to me. There are other people that are dead to me. Chuck is not dead to me. I just don't really talk to him anymore. He's still writing. And every now and then he just pops out a random Western book. <clears throat> so he's still doing it. 
He's still up in over in Knoxville, but uh, otherwise, I really don't. Uh, we have a group a group text with a bunch of us, and probably once a week, Chuck does like a drive by and he comments on one or two things. That's about it. Otherwise, he ignores it. Miss Frank says closing in on fifty, adorable. Nobody tells you about all the trim you get once you get fifty. I know it's crazy, crazy the, the amount you get. It's crazy that. Once you hit 50, you're still calling it trim. Yeah, Chuck is bu busy being Southern, exactly. Afternoon, readers and writers. Chad Lusky in the house. My stomach's ro roiling. My wife hates that word. Hey, Tom. Come in here. We're going to do a little switch. I can go to the bathroom. But you can feel free. You can come in here. It's pulled up. You can write in there. Okay. All right. I have to put my hat backwards. Getting some writing. Let's see, what can I say about this? This is a book about treasure hunting. That's that's kind of where I can go with it. 
nothing's actually planned out, but that's the basic idea is, is uh, treasure hunting in the Mexican Pacific side of the country. Yeah, I think he went to go shave his off. Uh, is it cool? Is that a new genre? You want It's it's like a crime thriller. So no, I've done that before. But it's uh, the uh, the environment and the topic is or the subject is new. It's more, it's like a, everything happens in a tropical type of area, so it's different. Uh, taking into account the heat and the humidity and everything that comes along with uh, working around, uh, around the Mexican coast and the cartel. Best word. Oh, window look. Shelly is here. That's window look. I have not seen anybody run by in short shorts or any of the usual stuff that happens when nobody else is here. Okay, I keep talking. What to do? What's the, uh, Sean, what's the difference with uh, the second edition of that book? Do you know? I read the first one. I don't know what the, uh, what was added to it. It's been about 10 years since the first edition, so I know there are additional chapters and just more fleshed out than the first one. Cool. I don't do any of the, the outlining or, or scene writing, but um, it was still a, it's still an interesting book to read. And even if you don't do any of that, it, it has some helpful tips in there. Uh, how do I end this? Okay, you just stand there. Uh, now I 
don't want to do that. Isn't that convenient? You get to yeah, sit, it works, huh? sit here and, and write. I got to the next page. Oh, did you? you next don't. page. Where's Nick? Yeah, Nick. <laughs> Son of a bitch with him. He's probably out buying cheese curds. <laughs> oh, good times, good times. And the ladies are back with some food for MondoCon. Very cool, very cool. All right, get some of this writing stuff in. Me and Tom had pizza rolls for lunch. Delicious, excellent. Gotta have more pizza rolls. I gotta read more of those uh, help books for writing. I buy a bunch of them. Every the time I see them, I buy them. I just never read them. Oh yeah, it's good. It's Italian. I'm Italian. My beard grows very quickly. Nick's probably going to hang out with his fake girlfriend, his imaginary girlfriend right now. She's not fake, she's just imaginary. Nick is on a plane right now. For something like your tropical thriller you're writing, how do you handle research? Do you spend time at the beginning or start writing and just use placeholders like find out more about tropical snakes when you come to a scene? He's flying in from Lumpa Land. Yeah. Oh, sure, Nick. Shows up after I get to the next page and then leaves. Yeah, thanks, Nick. We already Tom already wrote the next page. I do minimal research on stuff. I mean, I know a lot of stuff. I'm really smart when it comes to things. Next page, Nick Zinn. Tom, you should have yelled that one. In all fairness. Next page. Yeah, he just yelled it. So we're good. But, um, I usually have some ideas. Like, so the stuff, what me and Tom are writing now, you know, there's, there's people diving in the in the ocean and stuff and i've never i've never been a diver i've never uh done any of that so i just kind of fake through it on the first draft yeah i've watched a lot of shark week shows so i, I know a lot a lot about diving already but other than that no not really there are sometimes why I will have to do some research, but a lot of times I know ahead of time. Like, uh, so I'm doing a a book for Severed Press about um, a legend about uh, a uh, Nazi gold train that was hidden in Poland and during world, the end of World War II. It has never been found. It's never even been found that it's a truth or not. But I did a lot of research before I started the book on it. And came up with a bunch of ideas. As well as where the location could be. Who would have been involved. Stuff like that. 
In order to dive, you have to have a bull shark eat your arm and leg first. That's what I learned in my research. Yeah, that's also what I learned. And then you have to be manly enough or dumb enough, I'm not sure, to still get in the water with bull sharks after they um, after they've eaten your arm and your uh, and your uh, your hand and your leg. Okay, cool. That sounds fun. I'd read that. You better read that, son of a bitch. You better buy it. I mean, i got to finish writing it. I'm about a third of the way done with it. If they get too close, just tickle their snout. I've, I've seen on a couple of them now, they were like, oh, yeah, you just punch them in the nose and the shark goes away. And then they're like, yeah, that doesn't work. These people get into a cage, then are lowered into the shark's domain. They are a special kind of crazy. That's like nightmare food. Yeah, I, I, I don't get it. Me and Tom both of us falling asleep on the couch last night, watched a couple of uh, uh, shark shows. And I'm like, why are you getting in the, why are you getting in the water with the sharks, you morons? People are just nuts. Speaking of nuts, tonight we're going to, to Taco Lou's for some tacos, some scallop tacos. And whatnot. I'm very excited. Scallop tamarind tacos. That does sound delicious. Scallop tacos. Nice. Exploding sharks. Yep. There, Frank, there's your book you gotta read. You gotta write. You can't read it, you gotta write it first. done. He'll have the book done by the time Mondokan is over. If only he's right. That would be nice though, right? I am uh, down in 33. I'm, uh, I broke 19,000 words. Which is nice. So I've actually wrote over 2,000 words on this already today. 
and then me and Tom traded a couple of chapters. So. Why does it keep freezing? So when Tom gets done with this chapter, then I can, uh, I'll jump back in. Although I'm going to be honest with you, I might also take a nap if my wife leaves. If, if, uh, if the, if the girls leave and go, uh, to do more shopping and get some lunch. Also going to need a good shower. You can't go to Taco Luz smelling. If I play my cards right, I should finish the Kaiju book at MondoCon. Very nice. Play those cards right. I am right. Yeah. What is that? Oh, because Frank wants it? It's right there. Yeah, Frank's here. Look, Frank. I don't know how to get in front of your camera the right way. Camera's here. Oh, camera's there. There you go. There you go, Frank. I got you M&M's. Frank wanted M&M's. That's right. <laughs> Frank said chopsticks. <laughs> no chopsticks. You are not eating with chopsticks in my house. Yeah, he needs M&M's with chopsticks. He's going to eat M&M's with chopsticks. Sean says, how do you go about merging, massaging your two different writing voices with a co-author book into one unique voice? Uh, I try to write with people that have uh, a voice that is close to mine. And then in the editing stage, it gets a lot uh, better because the editor uh, will know to merge them more. But I don't write with people who are like long-winded. I don't write with um, I don't write with anybody who is uh, is it doesn't have a uh, similar approach like I do. So that works. Like uh, like these books, the three that I've written with Tom, four I've written with Tom, and this fifth one that we're doing now. We have similar styles, um, and we kind of understand what we're the other one is doing. So I think that really helps. Do not care if folks can guess which. Ch I don't. I don't like to write where you know who wrote which chapter. I don't. I don't think. I think that takes the writer out of the story. The reader out of the story. professional Sean said hey Shelly she's, she's already gone how am I supposed to eat M&M's without chopsticks I don't know Sean Cole is curious as a cat Tom Duffy says chapter done nice he asks intelligent questions the way I make nonsensical statements it's pretty much the same thing what the hell was that
I will give this to my wife. Oh, so the wine, um Yeah, she does all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta understand though, Ellen, that like, you were planning this like, for like, a year, right? Like, not just post this, like, next week or the one year, but next year you're gonna think about doing this and you're gonna be like, I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know. I'll, I'll give this to her, babe. Hope, hope you get out of the heat. Thousand degrees out, people door to door selling crap. <sighs> no, there's, there's, there's my window. Now I'm gonna watch him. He stopped at the little free library. He's looking for a copy of Socks. I don't think there is a copy of Socks in there, though. He looks very disappointed there's no copy of Socks in the little free library. He's still looking though. He's still he's still looking. The Hidden Truth, that was the title. Remember the one you wrote with Jay about the app? Forget the title. I remember that one was really smooth. I couldn't tell who wrote it. And me and Jay had a very similar uh, style, which was good. I think we wrote five or six books together, all told. He's being too nice. Also just realized I bought Room 138 and didn't read it yet. Bad Yeah, really bad Sean. Read that. I don't care if you read it or not, as long as you bought it. Tom can just walk out there and tell him about it. Yeah. Oh, the guy walked away. Or Tom would have went out. Hey, let me, talk, let me tell you about socks. I'm going to sneeze. I think I'm going to wrap this up uh, very soon. Anybody got anything else? Sean, you got another couple of questions for me? I would love to answer. So I think I'm going to wrap this up now. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm going to take a nap. I'm sure Tom is also going to take a nap. But uh, I will see some of you tomorrow. I will see Nick and Frank tomorrow. And I will be back on here on Friday, and we will have uh, everybody who is hanging out at MondoCon will be uh, making an appearance. So star-studded event. Ugh, excuse me. All right, everybody. I will talk to you all later.